Streak helps us track people and companies with contacts and organizations. This lesson is an overview of what contacts and organizations are, how we can access their interaction history and contact details in contact pages that Streak builds for us, and how contacts, organizations, and boxes all fit together. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to add contacts and organizations to our boxes and automatically share their emails with our team. Let's start with contacts. They help us track people in our inboxes, pipelines, and boxes. They're identified by their email, although we can also create a contact with just a name if we don't have their email address. An organization tracks information about an entire company, which is identified by their domain, like streak.com or, in this case, juno.com. When we create a contact or organization, Streak automatically compiles all of their information into contact and organization pages. We'll see those later, but we can access that information right here in the sidebar. That lets us see if Maya has any related contacts or organizations, and if they're involved with any other boxes in our team's pipelines. We know Maya is in our sales pipeline, and this shows us that they also wrote into support with a question. This support ticket has already been resolved, so we know that Maya probably isn't needing help right at this moment. If the ticket were still open, it gives us a heads up that Maya might be experiencing an issue or waiting for a reply from one of our team members. One of the ways that contacts and organizations help us collaborate and stay organized is by showing us all of the email threads our team has with this person. We can see each email thread in Maya's contact page, even if we're not included on the actual email. Streak automatically pulls in our entire team's emails with contacts and organizations and puts them in chronological order in this activity timeline. So the contact page really is our source of truth. Any grayed out emails haven't been shared by our team yet, so we can see that the email exists, but not the full email content. We can ask our teammate to share the email and view the full message here once they give us permission. Streak integrates with Clearbit to auto-enrich the contact information in the sidebar with any publicly available information like a physical address or a social media profile. That means we get more information about our contacts as soon as we add them to Streak. Organizations are similar, except they show us information and email history for all of our contacts that have the same domain in their email address. In this case, juno.com. Here, we can see emails with Eloise and Maya, our two contacts at Juno Cafe, all grouped together in the team activity timeline. Because of this, checking out a contact or organization page is a great first step when we're looking into a new lead, candidate, or other opportunity in our pipelines. It's also the first place we go when our teams make a handoff, like from sales to customer success. So how do these contacts and organizations fit into our pipelines? Contacts and organizations are where we can find details that are always true about a person or company, like their contact information and their email history. Boxes are where we can track what we're working on right now in a certain process. In this case, we're tracking a sales opportunity that we're trying to close with Juno Cafe. The information that we add to the box is specific to this deal or opportunity, not just the contact or organization. We'll have different methods for naming our boxes in each pipeline, and sometimes they may be the same as the contact or organization. Since we're selling to businesses here, the name of the boxes in our sales pipeline are the same as our organization name. In other cases, the name of the box will match an individual contact's name, which often happens in a hiring pipeline or if we're selling to individual people. In our support pipeline, we're going to use the subject line of the email inquiry, but we still want to track who's writing in in the contacts column. No matter what we name the box, it's helpful to add contacts and organizations to our boxes for a number of reasons. Once we add a contact to a box, we'll have shortcuts to send them an email, start a conversation, or schedule a meeting. Finally, when we add a contact to a box, we'll have the option to pull in all of their emails with our team, which we saw in their contact page. Having the information in the box lets us really focus in to understand the details and context of any opportunity in our pipelines. 
In the next lesson, we'll show you how to add contacts and organizations to your boxes, pull in all of their emails with our team, and even set it up so future emails get added automatically.